First question came from our newest patron, uh, the Pushing P family. Now, uh, hopefully, the Pushing P you talking about is pushing positivity, or you pushing that Marcus Peters is back, or something like that. But shout out to you, uh, we appreciate you. Uh, oh, and he did say he said uh, it's me and my wife's thirteen year anniversary. Woo Congrats, thirteen years. Well, that's a long time, man. Um, but if you could do 13 years, then you could do 26 years. If you could do 26 years, then you could do 52. Is that the right man? Anyway, congrats to you and your wife uh, on your anniversary. That's, that's special right there. Uh, he said, if the season will start right now, who will make the 53-man roster? That's tough. That is really tough. Ravens are going to have some extremely tough decisions to make. When it comes to who makes this 53-man roster, I am not envious of Eric DaCosta and them at all. Um, whew, that's uh, well, they do they do make a lot of money, but anyway, they that's a tough position to be in. But one thing that I do appreciate, shout out to the Baltimore Ravens, by the way. Um, I love that they do the the whole you pick the team contest because I probably would not have really been able to do this question properly without. The contest that they have where you can go to the app. This is not sponsored, by the way. You know, anyway, where you can go to the app and you can pick the 53 man roster because they got the contest where you can win the Kyle Hamilton jersey and two tickets to the home opener and sideline pass and all that good stuff. But anyway, um, initially I started doing it and I was at 54 men on the roster before I even picked uh, the, the special teams unit. And you know, all three of them obviously got to make it Nick Moore, Justin Tucker, and Jordan Stout. But I was at 54 men on the roster before I even got there. And I'm thinking, man, I picked the, the, the best of the best. And I picked guys who I really feel could make the team. But it's going to be tough because everybody can't make it. Yeah, you got practice squad and whatnot. But still, every not everybody can make it. So they got some real tough decisions. But I did cut it down to 53. I had to do some things and maneuver some roster spots and whatnot. But... Here we go. Quarterbacks, Lamar Jackson, Tyler Huntley. I don't think there's any debate there, anything like that. Now, wide receiver. See, debate can start so early because it may not be like this. So much of this part depends on Tylen Wallace for me. Right now, I'm, I, I, I chose the wide receivers as if Tylen Wallace was going to be out uh, for an extended period of time. But we'll see. Wide receivers, I chose Rashad Bateman, Devin DuVernay, James Prochet. I think everybody would be on the same boat with that. But then for the next couple spots, that's where it gets tricky. Right now, I chose Shamar Bridges and Makai Polk. But it could it could be Jalen Moore. He could be in there. Benjamin Victor could possibly be in there. We'll see. It That could change week to week. But those are the ones that I went with. Um, tight end. I mean, no, running backs. Running backs first. J.K. Dobbins, Justice Hill, uh, Tyler Beatty, and Mike Davis. I don't think there would be any disagreement there. Um, but at tight ends, this is where it can get tricky because I chose Mark Andrews, Nick Boyle, Isaiah Likely, but I also put Charlie Collar on there too. Or is it Kolar? Whatever his name is. I got, I got to get that right because I don't want to be calling him the, the wrong name the whole season. But anyway, those are the four that I chose. But with Charlie Collar out right now with the sports hernia injury, when will he be back? Will he be back by the regular season or will they have to do a little maneuvering with the roster and whatnot? We'll see. This is where it can get even more trickier because the, the guys that I chose, Ben Cleveland, Jawan James, Patrick McCary, Tyree Phillips, Ronnie Stanley, Kevin Zeitler, Daniel Falele, Morgan Moses, and Tyler Lindenbaum. Initially, I had chosen more offensive linemen. I had Tristan Colon on there too. But then when I got to the end of the roster, like I told y'all, I was at 54 people and I hadn't even put special teams on there yet. So I had to go back and make some tough decisions. So I had to take Tristan Colon off. I, I did y'all see I did not put Ben Powers on there because I still think he's gonna be traded. We'll see. So it's it's t David Sharp. David Sharp. I think he he probably end up on a practice squad though. But we'll see. So that is the offense. Now let's flip to defense, which is still just as tough. Chuck Clark, Marlon Humphrey, Marcus Peters, Brandon Stevens, Geno Stone, Kyle Hamilton, Tony Jefferson, Marcus Williams, Jalen Amore Davis, Kyle Fuller, Demarion Williams. Wow, that's a lot. And this was this was tough too. Because I left off Ardarius Washington. I left him off. That's a tough one. I left off Kevon Seymour. Um, David, David Vereen been making plays, man. He been making some plays. Um, but I left him off, too. And, and, and I left off Daryl Worley. So, I mean, the toughest one out of that bunch for me was Ardarius Washington. 
But it's it's tough, man. That's why I'm I'm not the GM. <laughs> Anyway, uh, linebackers. I love how they just put all the linebackers together. They ain't do no inside, outside linebacker, no Mike, Sam, this, that. No, they put all linebackers together. Tyus Bowser, Malik Harrison, Dalen Hayes, Adafi Away, uh, Patrick Queen, Stephen Means, uh, David Ajabo, Josh Bynes, Justin Houston. See, this is tricky too. I don't even know if I believe my own roster right now because I wanted to put Christian Welch on there. But I think, yeah, I, that would put me at 54 people. So you, you see how, and I feel like I feel like Christian Welch is going to make the roster, but who do I take off? If I put Christian Welch on, who do I take off? I know Stephen Means, he's, so far, is looking good. It's like, it's crazy because Stephen Means, he, he just be looking so slow, but he was making plays, though. So whether you fast or slow, if you make plays, you make plays. And he's off to a good start. So far, so good for him. But I just, who, who do I take off to put Christian Welch on there? That's why I say this is so tough. Next, defensive line. This is where it got even tougher. Calais Campbell, just a matter of BK. Uh, I don't know why they have Pat Ricard still listed as a fullback slash defensive lineman. Just, he's been a fullback for years. He ain't played defensive line in so long, man. Ravens, let it go. Anyway, um, Calais Campbell, just a matter of BK, Patrick Ricard, Broderick Washington, Travis Jones, Michael Pierce. Tricky. Because you got guys like Isaiah Mack, who I didn't put on. You got Brent Urban, who I initially, when I first was making the roster, I put him on, but then I had to take some people off, and I was like, ah, well, Brent Urban, no, he didn't make the cut. So it's possible he could flip with Broderick Washington, but Broderick Washington was coming on strong at the end of last year, but still, they, they got Travis Jones. So it's, what do you do? <laughs> this is so hard, man. It was so tough. Uh, but then the last three with Nick Moore, Justin Tucker, and Jordan Stout. So, again, Eric DeCosta and them, tough, tough decisions uh, when they put this roster together because it's, it's not going to be so simple. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You two team keep it clean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it. Team, keep it clean. Welcome to another episode of NFL Questions from Subs. We can ask any single NFL question you want to, and we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Don't send it anywhere else, or else your question will not be part of this. Don't send it nowhere else. So for the patrons, the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. You ain't got to worry about email this, email that. You send it directly on Patreon. Uh, I love y'all, Team Keep It Clean. I appreciate y'all. Um, we Shout out to the, the new Team Keep It Clean patrons. Shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. Shout out to all of y'all. Appreciate y'all uh, showing that love and extra support. This next question came from a Team Keep It Clean patron. That Again, a name that y'all are familiar with is Nazarene. He said, hey, bro, what's good? I just want to put this out there. My biggest fear with the Ravens is the coaching. I think most games that we lose come from bad coaching. Um, yeah, that they, they can. It can also come from players just... Executing bad too. There, there can be there could be a bad throw. Uh there could be drops. There could be bad blocking. Um there could be poor tackling. Um there it, it's it all just depends. But I feel you. He said, uh, I don't think the Steelers have a better team than us. I just think the coaching is better in situational football. Ooh, 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 ooh. Matter of fact, I would even say we have been losing before the game starts. Gosh, I feel like we got soft shaking my head. Definitely needed MP. That's another thing, man. Can we re-sign Marcus Peters next year? I don't think so. They can, but I don't know if they will right now, man. I think I was just talking to one of my guys about this the other day. Um, I think they're waiting, um, and then they're going to see how he does this season. If Marcus Peters is like, bam, he making that Marcus Peters impact that we know he can, then I think he's he going to make it real tough on the Ravens to where it's like, hey, can we, are we going to bring back Marcus Peters too? Are we going to do it? Because they could. I mean, all their receivers on rookie contracts. Ain't like none of them getting paid big money like that. Lamar Jackson, of course, he, I mean, you, <laughs> whatever happens next year, his price tag going to go way up. It, it better be on the Ravens roster. I know that. But um, so you, you're going to have some tough decisions to make. But uh, so we, we'll see. We'll see with Marcus Peters. 
Um, but he said, can we resign Marcus Peters next year? I don't think so. That's probably why we need another one to step up outside of Marlon. But anyway, man, the Steelers have Brian Flores, and Brian Flores knows how to play against Greg Roman. <laughs> this is why growth um, is so important. Uh, and this is not just as a coach, but this is just in life in general. Um, but certainly as an NFL coach, grow, it's important to, to grow. It's important to expand. And it's just important to get better as players, as coaches, just as people. Um, for Greg Roman, yeah, we know that with Brian Flores last year, boy, he had the Ravens offense. Lamar was struggling. Hollywood was struggling, dropping. Sammy Watkins was struggling, fumbling, and not giving effort. Um, and I, so, I mean, hey, it's some of it, a lot of it was Brian Flores because he was, boy, he was blitzing. He was just sending everybody. Um, offensive line was bad all last year, so that didn't make the situation any easier. Um, but the whole team, it was just nasty. It was nasty. A lot of missed opportunities. Um, but so, yeah, Brian Flores, I'm sure you're feeling nice and confident. Um, but he is, what is he, a linebacker's coach? So I'm sure he'll give his input and whatnot. But that's why it's important for Ravens just as a whole to show that they grew from that. Uh, because team, they, I mean, coaches, they remember. We as fans, we remember. But coaches, they certainly remember. They're like, oh, yeah, this, they struggled with this when we played them before last year. Even though I was on a different team, they struggled with this big time. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're going to, oh, yeah, I remember that. So it's important that Lamar be better than he was in that Dolphins game. And just be better, period. It's important that Greg Roman be better than he was in that, and just be better, period. Everybody. Um, because if you can't grow from a previous situation, then you're going to continue to be stuck in a previous situation. So hopefully the Ravens don't be stuck in a previous situation. Uh, but he said, uh, what, what y'all think, though? Good coaching wins games, and good coaching wins games, and either in the beginning or the end. Keep doing your thing, fam. Appreciate you, Nazarene. Now, these next two questions, I, I gave them an initial pass only because it was their first time. But I'm, I'm back to not giving any passes anymore uh, because no more passes if you send your question to the wrong place. But I love y'all. Anyway, next question came from my guy, Terrence. He said, what's up, Engraving? My name is Terrence, and I've been subscribed for a while, but this is my first time sending in a question. With that being said, let me get it started. All right, let's get started. He said, what is your most memorable moment, good or bad, as a Ravens fan? Oh, okay. Most memorable moment. Mm, I got a couple of them. Um, the 2000, well, it was the year 2012, but it was the season 2011, the, uh, the AFC Championship game, the Billy Cundiff, the Miss. Um, I, just, I just remember just feeling all types of sad. Um, and then the following year, uh, just, um, most memorable moment from that year, uh, the Patriots game, which was cra the, the regular season Patriots game that was just crazy. It was looking like, uh, Ravens might lose. It looked like we would get okie doked. I remember, um, Ladarius Webb, Ladarius Webb got called for such a bad, I think it was, they call it like defensive holding. And it was third down. It was close to the end of the game. And it was such a bad call. And I'm like, what? I was so heated. And then the whole crowd, they started cheering something that wasn't so team keep it clean. So they were heated too. Um, and that game and just then the Torrey Smith going off that game uh, and his brother just early that morning, I think, had, had, had passed. And like, man, he still came to work and showed up like that. That's, that, that's, that's tough. I, I couldn't do it. Um, and then the whole the field goal thing and just the way that they came back. Uh, that same year, um, going to the Raiders game, because uh, that was special because that was uh, that's the year that we got married. That's the year me and my wife got married, and, and that was her first Ravens game ever. Um, so that that was cool. Uh, then the playoffs, just um, the 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 Andrew Luck game, the the game against the Colts. They was at the crib, and just Ray Lewis coming out for the last time. That tears in my eyes watching them. I'm, I'm crying. And I remember um, I and I told you all this story before I ain't told it in a while. But I remember I, I really wanted to go to that game really bad. And I even I put my car up for sale. My only car. Only I didn't have no other cars or nothing like that. I ain't even hardly had no money. But I put my car up for sale. Uh, I put it up on um, uh, Craigslist. I put it up for sale because I just I, I really wanted money to get tickets to go to that game. But then I was like, oh, then I, I ended up taking it down. Um, and just watched it from uh, the sports ball with me and my girlfriend at the time, who ended up becoming my wife. Um, so, yeah, it was that. Uh, and just thinking, I, I was confident that they were going to win that Colts game. Uh, but then the next game was the uh, the Broncos. 
And I remember seeing the, these uh, these signs and, and all this talk on, oh, yeah, well, I guess the Broncos, they're getting ready to retire Ray Lewis. And I was thinking, man, these Broncos, well, that's Peyton Manning, and that dude, is a he's a dog. We already know. Uh, that dude is a beast. He's been doing this thing for a long time, and he, yeah, he won a Super Bowl, too. He want to win a Super Bowl with a different team and whatnot. And I'm like, oof, uh, I don't know. Then the way that the game was going, really, the defense was playing really good that game. And Broncos touchdown. I need. Mean, I mean, the Broncos did end up getting touchdowns on offense, but Trenton Holiday, he was that dude. Remember him getting a punt return and a kick return for a touchdown in that game. I'm like, man, come on! But then um, uh, Corey uh, Corey Graham with that pick uh, in overtime. Um, and first of all, obviously Jacoby Jones. Uh, that Joe Flacco to Jacoby Jones at the very end of the game. Um, but then yeah, Corey Graham with the pick in overtime that set up Justin Tucker for the game with a field goal. Like, whew, that that was crazy. I was running around screaming like crazy. Uh, and then, of course, like that game was super special. But AFC Championship, it just made so much sense that the AFC Championship ended up running it back against the New England Patriots. And that game, boy, like me, before, I don't, I don't hate no teams now. I don't hate nobody now. <laughs> but before, back then, ooh, I hated the Patriots with a passion. I really did. I, I hated them. I did not like Tom Brady at all, man. Um, and I just, I did not like them. And I remember being at the sports bar, there was a Patriots fan who was there and he would come to the sports bar a lot. So I had seen him a lot. And, um, I remember the, the game, I, cause I was staying up the whole game. So I remember just watching the game and the, and the Ravens just start dogging them. It was close for a little bit, but the Ravens just started dogging them. Then uh, I think Daniel Ellaby, was it Daniel Ellaby? I think, yeah, I think it was him that caught that pick. On Tom Brady in the end zone. Or was it Kerry Williams? No, I think it was Daniel Ellaby or Daniel Ellaby. Either way. Um, and I just remember the, the, the just the, the, the score separating and the Ravens just really getting control of that thing. And ooh, I was running my mouth. And he was sitting there upset. He was mad. And he's like, no, they cheating, man. And then I just, I was so happy when they won that game. And I'm like, man, they're going to the Super Bowl. I was crying. I was, I was I'm a big crier. The Ravens made me cry a lot. Um, both good and bad. But then, uh, then the Super Bowl, of course. The Super Bowl, being in a sports ball for forever because the whole light's going off. And it's like, man, really? Come on now. And, and Ravens, like, they, they putting it on them 49ers. They, they were putting it on them. Flacco throwing touchdowns. Uh, Q, uh, Peter, uh, Jacoby Jones. Jacoby Jones ended up running the kickoff return back. And Anthony Allen, he was, he was holding on that kick return. <laughs> but, but then Roger Goodell said, hold up, man. This is not good for my ratings, man. Yeah, Beyonce or Beyonce or not, this is not good for my ratings. He said, "Okay, shut it down." Uh, then they cut the power off. Um, then yeah, so that um, the two thousand the two thousand eleven uh, season opener um, was it two thousand eleven? I think it's two thousand eleven. Yeah, where the Ravens they dog walked the Steelers uh, like thirty five to seven. I think Ben Roethlisberger had the same number of turnovers as his jersey number. He had seven turnovers, which was great. Um, that same year, uh, when the Ravens finally, finally beat the Steelers in Pittsburgh with Ben Roethlisberger playing because they had never done all three at the same time. They couldn't, they just could not beat the Steelers in Pittsburgh with Ben Roethlisberger as a starter. So, but then they finally did it. That whole Torrey Smith play that the, the Flacco drive, that was like 92 yards to start it off with Anquan Bolden, uh, making clutch plays. And then Torrey Smith, Torrey Smith made the, uh, the game winning touchdown. Um, so yeah. Uh, those are some of my, my most memorable moments. Um, Lamar Jackson entering his era, uh, his first game as a starter um, against the uh, against the Dolphins. Uh, his first week one start against the Dolphins and just being there and just, boy, almost passed out a couple of times because I was drinking water, but it was just so hot. Um, and when I was just screaming so loud and I was starting getting a little bit dizzy and whatever, and I said, like, hey, I had to chill out. But um, just it, it was special. And then... Um, uh, even going back, going back, um, just 2000, what year was that? Um, the Patriots undefeated season uh, where the Ravens played them on Monday Night Football. And they lost, and Rex Ryan, he called a timeout, and the Ravens, they got the stop on that fourth down. And it was, oh, they were going to win. The Patriots ain't going to be undefeated no more. But, oh, uh, that, that was so frustrating. Um, but, yeah, so, yeah, I got a, a lot of uh, memorable moments. But anyway, he said, for me, I have two moments. The 2011 AFC Championship versus the Pats and the Divisional Round versus the Broncos. I had to choose both because I watched both games in the same restaurant in the same exact seat almost a year apart. 
Hey, uh, you, you you always remember where you at for stuff like that. On top of that, I was at work both times and had to sneak to watch the games. LOL. To see Lee Evans drop, well, he ain't drop it. Lee Evans ain't dropped that ball. That Sterling Moore stripped it out. That see, I don't. To me, I don't know why people call that a drop. I don't, I don't think Lee Evans dropped it. Sterling Moore made a nice play and yanked it out of there. But anyway, to see the Lee Evans drop and Cundiff miss, well, Cundiff definitely he definitely missed. Ain't nobody stripped that one. Uh, to seeing Tucker make the game-winning kick while sitting in the exact same place was surreal for me. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was special. And he said, P.S., uh, while writing this, I got a notification saying the Ravens activated Marcus Peters. So we'll see when this question is answered. Keep up the great work. Love the channel. Hey, appreciate that, Terrence. Thank you. And the last question on this episode came from my boy Andre. And again, he, he sent it to the wrong email. But again, I'm going to give him a pass this time. And that's it. No more passes for nobody. I still love y'all, but no more passes. Anyway, my guy Dre said, Angry Raven, hope you and the family are having a great week so far. We are. Everything's pretty good. He said, what do you expect to see from the Ravens this year as far as offensive-wise when it comes to scheming in the passing game? I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping that we can get a um, – I'm hoping we can get uh, some 2019. Um, but this time, not what happened in the playoffs, but people actually catching the ball. But uh, 2019 – Offense, the, the running game mixed with 2021, the passing game. The, the, the passing game, I just I, I love how they took strides, but I just want it to be now with a healthy roster. I want it to be where they're taking strides and not because the, all their running backs are injured, not because their offensive line can't run block, but I want to see them take strides because they, they want to take strides, not because they're forced to. That's what I hope to see. He said, I feel like we have a lot of dogs on the team, but I do feel like we need to incorporate more screens so it can open up the offense even more instead of being run dominant six. 70 percent of the time please let me know your thoughts and have a blessed day i appreciate it now um it was a beautiful thing to see the other night in the preseason game the ravens ran a screen and it was successful now they uh they didn't get a first down because they had lost a bunch of yards like on the previous play but they ran a successful screen and it was like hold up now hey hey, hey ravens don't, don't play with me like that because you know your universal was green to be nice and go rate them but then be successful um another thing too would be more plays under center Plays under center. Every every play does not have to be in a shotgun, a pistol, or whatnot. Plays under center because that adds so much to your offense. It adds so much to your offense. And you want to open this thing up as much as possible so you have so many options on what to do. And again, volume is so important too because if you don't you don't want to go you don't want to be running through all these teams in the regular season. Oh man, we run ran through this team. We ran for two three hundred yards on this team. Da 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 da. And then you get to the playoffs and you got to pass. And it's like, oh, well, we, we haven't worked on that too much. No, you, you want to be able to do both. So that's important too this year that the Ravens have proper volume. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got to made it. How to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens. Like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. Shout out to Graven.